So it feels like in every single presidential election cycle, there's always one story that gives us a lot of insight into the true nature of a particular candidate, not for policy reasons, though. For example, in 2019, we learned about the true nature of Amy Klobuchar, that nature being that she's a complete psychopath, after we learned that she screamed at an aide and then ate her salad with a comb. One mi- <laughs> Once the Minnesota senator finished her meal, she demanded her aide clean off the comb she had used as a makeshift fork. So you can make policy-based arguments against these politicians, but sometimes there's things about them that we learn that tell us that these people really are sociopaths or psychopaths. And I think that screaming at your aide and demanding that they clean off the comb that you use to eat a salad with, I feel like putting aside the policies that you do or don't support— I still don't want you to be president just based on that fact alone because you are a complete psychopath, okay? Now, in the 2024 cycle, we're already getting a gem similar to that. It's a story pertaining to Ron DeSantis and the way that he decided to eat food in, we'll say, an unorthodox way. As the Daily Beast explains, the chatter over DeSantis' public engagement has also surfaced past unflattering stories about his social skills, particularly his propensity to devour food during meetings. Quote, he would sit in meetings and eat in front of people, a former DeSantis staffer told the Daily Beast, always like a starving animal who has never eaten before, getting shit everywhere. In Tried in DeSantis lore is an episode from four years ago during a private plane trip from Tallahassee to Washington, D.C. In March of 2019, DeSantis enjoyed a chocolate pudding dessert by eating it with three of his fingers, according to two sources familiar with the incident. Okay, we already knew that DeSantis is probably a sociopath, but I think that this gives us undeniable proof that the man is a psychopath. He is a complete savage i'm not joking about this like this is very weird behavior for an adult i wouldn't expect my seven-year-old nephew to do this he's eight now but i wouldn't expect him to do this but you have a politician a grown man eating chocolate pudding with his fingers i mean and this happened in 2019 mind you so in 2019 just to paint the picture for you we have ron DeSantis eating pudding with his fingers like an animal. We have Amy Klobuchar eating her salad with a comb. I mean, was there something in the water that made politicians resort to this barbaric behavior? It's just genuinely insane to me, honestly. Uh, Now, this particular article that we talked about here, it's very unflattering towards DeSantis because you have a lot of insiders in the Republican Party who are already losing faith faith in him before he announced that he's running for president at all. They continue, while DeSantis is winning over supporters in the conservative movement for his hard right brand of politics and as impressed with his electoral success in once purple Florida, his untested skills under the bright lights of a presidential campaign have led operatives and pundits to wonder if he is just the second coming of Jeb Bush or Scott Walker. So he hasn't even announced that he's running for president yet, and we're already getting comparisons to Jeb Bush and Scott Walker by Republicans, mind you. Ouch. Now, to make matters worse, he is being relentlessly attacked by Donald Trump, and he's not responding. He's trying to take the Michelle Obama approach, when you go low, we go high, but that's not paying off for him, because what we're seeing by Donald Trump is effectively a death by a thousand cut strategy, and it's working. For example, this week, Trump's team filed an ethics complaint against DeSantis, asking the Florida Commission of Ethics to probe, quote, whether pro-DeSantis super PACs, his personally lucrative book tour, and a continued wave of state-level campaign contributions, among other things, are unlawful because they serve his personal political objectives, are in furtherance of his personal financial gain at the expense of Florida taxpayers, and are intended to influence his official decision to resign from office. Now, DeSantis's communications director kind of dismissed this as a politically motivated use of state ethics, and that's not wrong, but the irony here is that Trump himself has gotten very rich when he was in office. I mean, how many times did we see stories about the Saudis staying in hotels to butter him up? Or how he used his office to push for certain patents in China with Ivanka? I mean, you can easily turn this around on him, but DeSantis isn't doing that. At some point, you've got to respond, but he's not responding. And that is, I think, leading to a lot of speculation about him being just another flop. Jeb Bush 2.0. Maybe Jeb Bush 1.5 because he's really not that impressive. And I've got to be completely honest with you. 
as much of a danger that Donald Trump poses to democracy, I'm going to really enjoy seeing him rip DeSantis to shreds in the 2024 debates because back in 2015, 2016, when he took on Jeb Bush and Ted Cruz and all of these establishment scumbags, even though he himself was a monster, to see him just shred them, rip them a new asshole again and again and again in debate after debate, there was something really satisfying about that. It's always nice to see a fascist get their comeuppance, even if it's coming from another fascist, but it's going to be especially sweet to see Ron DeSantis get owned by Donald Trump. I mean, this man revoked the liquor license of a venue that hosted a drag show, which is a brazen violation of the First Amendment. His administration also has scoured school textbooks to ensure that no, quote, prohibited topics are being discussed discussed, and this has led to at least one publisher just avoiding the mention of race altogether, including the story of Rosa Parks, because they don't want to get penalized by DeSantis. And additionally, he's led the charge in anti-LGBTQ discrimination and his ban on medically necessary life-saving gender-affirming care went into effect this week. So this man is a monster. And to be clear, Trump also wants to ban gender-affirming care, but I don't think that Trump actually cares about these things. And there's a better chance of Trump not prioritizing these things compared to DeSantis, right? And the difference between Trump and DeSantis is that DeSantis is much more dangerous because he has the legitimacy that Trump lacks. The media will give DeSantis a pass or play along with his narratives, whereas that's not the case for Donald Trump. They're never that kind to Donald Trump. For example, an Axios reporter, Ben Montgomery, responded to a DeSantis press release by correctly calling it propaganda, and he was subsequently fired from Axios because of that. I mean, can you imagine any outlet going that far to appease Donald Trump? So DeSantis poses a unique threat. I think he's far more dangerous than Donald Trump. And there's already inklings that he is not impressive to Republicans and he's rubbing a lot of Republicans the wrong way with little stories here and there. For example, you know, him putting 50 bike racks in Iowa to separate him from the crowd and then people in New Hampshire commenting on that saying, okay, if he wants bike racks, we'll give him his fucking bike racks. So I'm glad that he's turning off Republicans in the establishment uh, because I don't want him to win. As dangerous as Trump is, DeSantis is, I think, exponentially more dangerous. So I like to see all of these stories emerge. I like to hear these murmurings about GOP officials saying, mm, we're not that impressed with this, with DeSantis. And if we really want to defeat Donald Trump, maybe we should back a different horse. Either way, all of this infighting within the GOP is very good for America. And if it leads to DeSantis going down, especially if it's by Donald Trump, I don't care. I'll enjoy watching that. I'll grab the popcorn, in fact, because this man is a monster. And if Trump brings him down, I will enjoy watching it. I'm not afraid to admit that. I'll be rooting for Donald Trump in this instance, in this limited instance. When you acting like a baby.